my dear sweet little one. Don't be alarmed. You're okay now. If you get this special message, it means that you went out into the ocean at a dangerous time. Why you went out on a boat, either with others or on your own. I'll never understand why, but you did. You must have capsized. I'm sure you're all sorts of confused. I hope my voice isn't too shocking for you. You might have thought I was dead. It's been at least over half a year since you heard my voice on that last day before I left. But I haven't died. I am very, very alive. Well, relatively. It's one thing to be alive and well. It's another thing to be alive and well. But incapable of being around the ones you love. If you're confused at all, sweetheart, let me make things more understandable. Remember that story I told you so many years ago when you were born? And the one that I repeated sometimes while you were growing up? The... the girl, the pregnant woman, was me. I had made a deal with a siren who were going to drag me into the ocean that if I sacrificed myself, gave myself to them within 12 years, I was allowed to live and raise you for those first 12 years after your birth. My job was to prove to the siren that I am a good mother and that I can teach you to love what almost killed us. I think I did a good job, because, well, for one, you have been granted permanent, and I mean permanent protection against any ocean waves, currents, storms, from now on. And, well, while they did plan originally to, hmm, to allow me to join my father, they decided to spare me, in a sense, and gave me the gift of being a siren. But maybe it's a curse. Either way, you'll never be able to see me ever again, and that just breaks my heart. However, I know that you're safe. I know that you're healthy. I know you'll be alright from now on, and that is the best thing that could ever happen. It's the best gift any mother could ever receive. No matter what happens to me, as long as you're safe and happy, it's okay. The one who saved you, the one who was allowed to save you, she is the sweetest. Zen. Zen is a good one. Unfortunately, because of this, we will both be exiled for not participating in being a complete siren and feasting on, on humans. It's disgusting. I don't know how they do it. Maybe it's desperation. Either way, after she leaves you, and after she gives you that gift, that special gift that I had, well, tried to hide from you, but the one that you found, when she gives you that, it will go away, far away for a while, as the leader of the siren. She won't allow us to be a part of her group. 
we would be if we participated. But because we have different values, different ideas, I guess, she's forbidding us to be anywhere near her or her sisterhood. That's okay with me, though. And while I may not be able to be with you physically, I will always be there for you in spirit. I will always be in your heart. At least I hope so. This message as well will never go away. If you ever miss me, you can tap at the center of the necklace. From there, you'll be able to hear my voice and the same message whenever you feel like it. I hope Sam explained that before she handed you this gift. If not, shame, but at least now you know. This necklace, by the way, is very special. I'm sure you felt that when you found it when you were younger, but this is a very, very, very special one. It was given to me by the leader as a way of making sure that I kept my word, as well as a reminder of who you are, that you are to be protected for the rest of your life by the siren in the ocean. If you ever throw this into the waters, Zen will see it, she will hear it, she will find it and return it to you, because only you are meant to have this supposed to be given to you when the time was right, and when I was told that you decided to go out on a boat into dangerous waters, I knew, I knew that the time was right. The inscription on the necklace says, Traveler of the Ocean, protected by Siren. I'm so thankful for Zen. She was willing to sacrifice so much of her livelihood to protect you, to bring you back to that cove, to the shore, where you will always be safe. She's giving you the necklace so that you never forget as well that the ocean is still a beautiful place, that I love you very, very much. You may never see me again. That's all right. Remember everything that I had taught you these 11 years that I was your mother. I mean, I'll always be your mother, but now a mother from far away. Remember the importance of patience, of being kind, of showing strength and courage when the time is right to stand your ground for what you believe in what you feel is right and true. And never, ever forget that despite the fact that you were almost pulled into the waves, that the ocean is a beautiful place. It holds many secrets, many beautiful stories. And now it houses me the ocean is my home now. This is my tale, my eternal story of how I became a mother and how, as a mother, I made a very difficult decision to make sure that you be forever taken care of. Trust me, it wasn't really difficult at all. You are my most treasured and precious gift. A gift of life that I never thought would be possible. But you're here. And I would never want anything to happen to you. I hope that your father, my husband, I hope he's doing well. I hope that he's happy. He knew about this 
by the way. But he refused to ever talk about it. I think he didn't really want to believe that it was something that would really happen. But sadly it did. My father is so strong, so brave and kind and loving. Learn from him how to be a good man, how to be a strong man, and a very wise and respectable one. You may only be nearly 12 years old now, but there's still so much for you to learn. How to grow, how to get stronger both physically and mentally, and how to take care of yourself as a man that I can't help you with, but your father can. I hope your studies are going well. I hope you're learning a lot and growing and maturing. I still see you down here on the beach when I'm swimming by and take a break by the rocks. I see you play with your friends and Despite the occasional sad look in your eyes, you seem happy. I'm glad for that. Remember the importance of having a friend, of making sure that you and your friends are doing all right. Check up on each other, care for each other, love each other as you would a brother or a sister. I'm sorry I was never able to provide a sibling for you, but I think that your father can only handle one. And like I said, most importantly, never forget about the ocean. Never be afraid of it. It's a beautiful place, and soon enough you'll be able to swim and travel the ocean as much as you want. Not now. You're so young. So little. So... So precious. I must go now. But remember how much I love you and your father so, so very much. I did this to make sure that you would remain happy and healthy and protected. Your father understands even though it upsets him. I hope you will too. Remember to love the ocean. And if you ever feel sad, listen to this message. And that night, whoever hears singing echo into your room. It seems to be coming from the ocean waves. That'll be me. You'll hear my voice being carried along the breeze to comfort you. I will know when you're sad because of that necklace of yours. Because of that, I will know when it's time to comfort you. Like I said, I won't be around forever. But while I'm here, I will always do what it takes. To make sure that you are safe, protected, happy, and healthy. I love you so very much, little one. And I will miss you for as long as I live. But I would never, ever take back my deal. As long as you're alive and happy. I know you'll make me very proud one day, sweetheart. I just know it, but in the meantime, never stop learning, never stop loving, never stop living and caring, and I know for sure you are going to be the best young man to ever, ever exist. I love you, sweetheart, and I wish you the very best. Goodbye. Love forever, your mother.